hello and welcome to your daily ping our second episode for everything ai and blockchain a quick overview of what we will cover in the next 15 minutes the usual ping page which is under development and which i will introduce every morning with a couple of links that are still available after the show if you want to get back to it uh, we will explain there is a newsletter that we launched that will explain what is the american association of small business leaders who um, creates all this materials we will cover our first course which is series one episode one chat gpt for beginners our series one is everything for beginners and you will have a series two three four five and so on and these will cover different topics including blockchain which will be coming up very soon and again we start from the very beginning you are not supposed to know anything about it we will explain everything so what is chat gpt what is open ai what is a prompt what is a large language model or llm how does it all work what can generative ai do and how does it all fit in my business that is our focus business leaders business owners people who want to improve the workings of their business with ai and blockchain but don't know where to start or do know where to start but still want more ideas and more uh, integration and this is what we will cover as usual gpt workdesk is our own development that we made specially for you integrating a lot of these functionalities and one easy workdesk and we will cover a few tips and then the state of the bitcoin which is nothing more than just saying hey this is where you can check on it because bitcoin is the crypto number one and we are just following it nothing more nothing less and then we will explain a little bit more about the digital wallet explanations custodial versus non-custodial wallet uh, you might have heard of, of, of this in the news there's a lot to do about it and we will tell you exactly what it means so let's go to our overview and for the overview i have loaded the uh, gpt work desk and we will use it in all our presentations which means that you get to be familiar with how it works this is the enterprise version not every version has all the features of course we have a light version which is free for our members and there's a pro and an enterprise version we use the enterprise version because as we develop it we want to test it and yeah like i said these are live uh, sessions which means everything can go wrong so here on the pingpage.com which is very much under development it is not even released but it is available uh, we see here on top the date because we will do one every day if that works out so this is the one from yesterday and you will see some links that i think we that are interesting and nothing else there is no distractions about a lot of stuff that are not needed and as you can see this is a twitter interface because we think it is very clean and it has a uh, tweet embeds so these tweets are uh, available on twitter.com if you wanted to go and follow us there but again we're not really exploiting that that platform for any of our endeavors because it is too convoluted with a lot of distractions that we believe is totally unnecessary for business use either way what we will cover today here is the explanation what is the aasbl or american association of smart business leaders and if i copy this link here and i go like this and i click here then what we should see is the substack aasbl at substack.com which is a newsletter interface that we are using right now to disseminate more information and reach more people we will go over this a little bit to say okay what is the american association of small business leaders and i will from now and say aasbl and what can it do for you so our focus is on artificial intelligence or ai and the reason for that is that in the many decades of programming for companies small and large what we discovered is that ai can really 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 help save you time and money and that is what we want to focus on 
regardless of all the noise. Don't believe the high people. It is There are some good things happening here. And we will focus on a very small segment. And we will focus on that very small segment as it relates to your business, meaning that at the end of this, these courses that we present, you will be able to use it and literally copy and paste these prompts and, and the, the results that we create and use it in your business right away. There is no delay. There is no. There is not much of a, of a, of a cycle. It's just getting started, and we start from the beginning. So that that's that's what we do with everything. Then here, what we offer our members, um, explained today is our course. These are the courses that we bring out for our members. These are mostly thirty minutes or less because that's kind of you know the amount of focus that we believe is 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 productive, and then the. We are creating hands-on workshops, which means that you can sit next to any one of us and focus on only the application for your business. <clears throat> we do it, the coursewares are very generic. It doesn't focus on a restaurant or a plumber or <clears throat> any of the other you know, small businesses that are using this. So the workshops gets really hands-on for your specific use case. And then these are the sections that we will cover, marketing, sales, customer service. I'm not going to name all of them. But all of these segments or all of these departments are using documents. They are creating documents. And we will show you really how AI can help you save a tremendous amount of time. This is not a replacement of your CPA or your legal advisor. It just helps speed the process up because you can do much more yourself you can fine-tune it and for the last step you can say okay here guys look over this and tell me you know can we use this the section here is let me explain so here we dive into explaining the topics on what a prompt is what tokens are everything that that the terminology we break it down and show you what it is so there are no gray areas that you don't understand. So the idea is that you walk away with new knowledge every time. Learn how to use a specialized software. So most of the GPT or the AI prompts or generative AI, however we want to phrase it, products are working in your browser. There are big companies behind it and they accumulate more and more of your personal data and your prof the profiling is out of control. So what we want to do is bring it back and keep the data in your company. And that's why GPT WorkDesk is a desktop application that you install. It is not for casual use, it is for business use. And of course you can use it for you know, recipes or writing books or whatnot. But the idea is that you keep your data in-house and it does not leave your company because a lot of that is indeed private. So we made a special software program for our members to accumulate functionality in one place and we'll go into that in, uh, in a couple of minutes and again the focus here is everywhere everywhere how to learn and how to use it in your business so wherever whatever the title is add to it in your business and that's what we focus on and then of course videos so there will be a video for today we have a lot of video materials that we disseminate it Anybody can use it, of course, because the knowledge in there is suitable for everybody. But again, our examples and our use cases are for small businesses. And these are the companies that we work with that we mention because you will see their products uh, over time. And you can always call them for more information about uh, what it is that uh, you need information on. So this is the newsletter. You can subscribe at l at substack.com. And that was that quick little intro. So what we're going to do now is the state of the Bitcoin. So as we said, we are not promoting any particular crypto. We want to just, you get familiar with it to get used to the terminology so you can talk about it sensibly. If you see it in the news that you can rationalize sensation and say, okay, it is either not that bad or we need to be careful about that because there's a lot of legislation going on that can be very, very detrimental if done the wrong way. So we need to be able to understand exactly what they're saying. And that's why we bring up terminology. We share 
information like total market cap that is here on the bottom. I did that yesterday, but I didn't highlight it. So that's the total market cap, the 24 hour volume. So this is, this is a little bit like the stock market for uh, digital currencies. That's the way I call them because crypto is more like the cryptography. It's a technical term, but in reality, all of these are digital currencies and a lot of them are useful. A lot of them are not useful. So we will make that distinction in a tech technical way so you can decide for yourself i'm not promoting any of them i'm just saying here this is how it works so if you look at the total market cap and there are thousands and thousands of digital currencies most of them you will never or nobody will ever use them there might be innovations there might be a lot of a lot of tribal <laughs> uh, marketing is happening so throughout all that confusion we want to focus on what 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 is the bottom line here and the bottom line here is the first and oldest and only digital currency that we will cover is bitcoin because it's the biggest one and we will talk about uh today it is thirty five thousand three hundred and eighty one dollars i think that's a thousand dollars more than yesterday so we're not going to focus on well you know do i need to buy do i need to speculate I don't care what we care about is that how we want to understand how to use it what does it mean for my company and if i do i need to accept bitcoin as a payment and why would i do that so this is what we will get into and one of the first things we mentioned yesterday is that why would i buy a thirty-five thousand dollar currency what what can i do with it and we explained yesterday that you don't really you don't you, you well you buy a coffee you could buy a coffee with it or, or or a meal but how do you pay with that and we explained that just like dollars have dollar cents bitcoin has bitcoin cents and these are called satoshis by the the namesake of the maker whoever that was so satoshi satoshis are cents and instead of a hundred cents in a dollar we have a hundred million Bitcoin cents in a Bitcoin. So there are, instead of two decimals, there are eight decimals. And that is a little bit getting used to. And yesterday I explained on how to convert in Satoshis and we will talk about more and more because the very first time that I tried to understand what is Bitcoin, that was the first thing I, I, I was learning for myself, you, working with those digits and then referring back to a dollar value. So at this point, about 2,800 Satoshis are one dollar so that's a little bit a different way of thinking so that was our quick segue into bitcoin i will close this one here and i think we were done we are done with this and then what we're looking at here is and it's a little small but yes it is you can still see it this is the gpt workdesk this is a software development specially made for our members and we will use it everywhere because it it is a replacement of five browsers and microsoft office or open office or whatnot everything is compatible so we don't do anything special but we bring it all in one work environment so if we look at the layout of this program then you see here a couple of panels which is a work desk you can have multiple work desks and the work desks organize your file and your data in drawers or you know that's kind of a filing system so we can we can close this and then open this and then resize this whatever works for you and then here we have the menu <clears throat> with everything in here and we're not going to go over everything but just know that there are many many um, integrations here that are happening some of them you see here my uh, ai office which is a word processor, a spreadsheet, notepad. We have the Chrome and Edge browser because if we work with Microsoft products or Google products, you know, the big boys, they protect their own turf and we are sitting with the, with the complications. So we build it all into one. So if you need a specific browser, boom, all you have is here a direct tab. These are absolute fantastic products that save you a lot of time and we will go over them one by one. And then here in the GPT work desk area, we have the big four as we call it. So we went over that also yesterday and I keep repeating it because that's the way to, to, to get familiar with it. So chat GPT was the, the first and is still probably the biggest. And, uh, and 
Google, no, sorry, Microsoft invested heavily in it and made their own version, which is called Google Bing Chat. And then, uh, sorry, Microsoft, Google came out with BART. So we have Bing and BART. I always find that funny. And then Cloud AI is a development that is interesting because they allow longer forms of text and input, which then comes back to AI tokens and how AI organizes data, which is something that you also need to know about. So if we go here in ChatGPT, for instance, this is the login screen where So here is where we are logged in, and this is the area where we can prompt. A prompt is nothing more than how you talk to the AI model. And we can say things like, hello, just to see that it works. And from here, we can ask it anything. So we are not going to explain everything because that is in a separate course, series one, episode one. It's called Intro to Chat GPT, and that is for beginners. What we wanted to do in this course is cover it so we can understand and know that this is what we're working with. So what is OpenAI? Is the company that uh, developed Chat GPT. What is a prompt? A prompt is your interface to the AI model where you ask questions and you communicate with it. You can have actual conversations and it works great. You can create documents, you can create a lot of, a lot of, it, you can upload images and ask it to interpret. You can ask for translations, you can ask to OCR, optical character recognition, a lot, a lot of very useful stuff that, again, saves you time and money. And then we go into it, how does it work? and what can generative AI do and how can I use it in my business. So that is what this first course is about. It's available on YouTube. It's available on our AASBL.com membership site. Some of these videos are free. Parts of it are free. It is up to you to uh, work through it and see if it's of any interest to you. We covered the work desk tips. We explained a little bit of the interface and the panels and the functionality and every live stream like this, we go in a little bit more detail. So very interesting to follow the state of the Bitcoin, $1,000 more than yesterday. And then the last thing that we cover is custodial versus non-custodial. So yesterday I showed you how to <clears throat> download or well, tell you that we, you could download any of these so actually, digital currencies are software and you can download it. You don't need anybody's permission. You can create an account. You don't need any identification. You don't need a driver's license. And there is no bank manager that might say, reject it. Nobody will reject you. And this is available around the world. Your wallet connects to the blockchain and you can start mining coins like, you, like I did here yesterday. And you can see here. I have 45 of these coins and we will use the Zillion wallet because it is free and it is not $30,000 a coin, which makes it expensive or Bitcoin makes it expensive to still use as a learning tool. So we switch to one of the alternatives and custodial and non-custodial. This wallet is non-custodial. That means that there is no custodian banks are custodians they own your money they own your bank account they can kick you out they can you know reject you for any whichever reason and they charge enormous fees on every possible transaction this is not this is the opposite so this is non-custodial which means that there is no gatekeeper there is no central bank there is no government agency that regulates the release of this yet they would want it, of course, and that is where we need to make sure that we keep this available the way it is, and that's what you will hear in the news. So the term we learned today is custodial versus non-custodial, and that, my dear friends, ends our webcast for today. I'm very happy to you've to, for you to have been here, and I will see you tomorrow again. Goodbye.